I don't know how to keep it short. <laughs> but I could tell you this, the pandemic has taught us that church is gonna be different from now on. Amen. And um, I'm learning to, uh, one of my friends, you know, they're on Zoom. One of my friends said he wanted to see if I could hold this down to 20 minutes. I can't, I, I, I can't do 20 minutes, but I sure won't do an hour. And if, uh, I won't do an hour. The pandemic, in some cases, not death, is a good thing. It's teaching us some things. It's teaching us that the four walls is not why we come together. Uh, we come together to celebrate. I'm looking at Zoom and those who are on Zoom. Imagine being in this building if they were on Zoom. It would have been a different thing. But God is everywhere. Well, I thank him for it. Master Guides, thank you, John, for the opportunity. John Wright, for the opportunity of allowing me to come here, especially your pastor, Pastor Lee Kimani. I'm very careful now of who, if I was a pastor, of who steps on the pulpit. That's another story. <laughs> but the truth is that when we preach from here, we preach strictly God's word. Amen. As much as we would love to give our opinions, which I do from time to time to time to time to time, you pay attention to God's word. That's what's important. Dad, I'm grateful to be here that the Master Guides will give such a gift. Um, I am... Maybe this is what you do on the outside, sister and father. But you all seem so brave from day one. I, 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 know, I know that people, that you, you have to do this for us. But I do believe that Jesus is coming soon. Man, if I never believed it before. Oh, hold on. Ushers, I can take this off, right? Who, who could give me permission to take this off? You said me. No, not you. <laughs> Thank you, but not you. <laughs> um, your safety officer here? Just, may I? All right, ushers, first of all, I want to say this, those who are watching, you've done a tremendous job in keeping uh, it sanitized. There's no one up here with me. And so that's why Deacon, I think it's the head Deacon that's standing up in the back, that's giving me permission to take this off. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the permission. Whew. I don't know how doctors do it. They have their mask on, four, five, six, seven hour surgeries. I can't even keep it on that long. But I want to thank you. I've been, and I want to tell you what I've done. For our risk management officers that's at the conference office, I have been taking video because other churches need to learn to do it the way you're doing it. Uh, to walk in the building and this lady won't let me in until she take my temperature. I wanted to know what she would have done if my temperature was high. She'd be like, you ain't preaching here. Matter of fact, matter of fact you need to get out of my face. <laughs> but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the safety and I wanted to let you know that and I love the way they did it. I don't care for you to pass that we need to hear from somebody else. I turned to them, can I take my mask off? <laughs> Hold on a second. We need to find out from somebody else. But I just, I'm just restricted. And what I won't do, which I normally do, and you know this, uh, 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 Sister Hopkins, I like to walk around. I won't. I'll be standing right here. And I won't. Look, and she's going to be all loud. Amen. You know. <laughs> I'll be up here. And I, and, and I know that you'll sanitize up here after I'm done. I'm not going to spend too much time unless I get happy in the Lord. I'm bringing to, to you today Judges chapter 6. I've preached about it before at other places. Some reason, I want to leave with you this same message, and however the Holy Spirit deals with you and me on it, to God be the glory. I want to also thank you, Sister June, for being such a supporter. It, you're not the only one. A bunch of, I know you. Yeah, I know you. And your partner. Yeah, Edmondson Heights run deep when they roll together. They roll deep. <laughs> and we're going to continue. The pandemic is not going to stop us. We do have to be safe. And I, you do understand that. So youth ministries is not on a hold. It's just gone virtual. And uh, believe it or not, the young people want to come back out. But we still have to do it with safety in mind. 
Judges chapter 6, and I'll pray right after. It says, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God. I want to stop right there. Uh, you could repeat the first verse with me if you'd like. It's a simple verse. It goes down to chapter 8, but we won't get there right now. It says, and the children of Israel did what, everybody? Evil in the sight of God. God, I ask you to be with us in these moments as we learn how to thwart evil. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Children of Israel did evil in the sight of God. I'm sorry, everybody, I don't preach Pathfinder sermons anymore. I don't. I don't preach youth sermons anymore either. I don't preach children's sermons anymore. Um, I believe that uh, if the children and the young people can listen to what the garbage they listen to and watch the foolishness they listen to, um, we, could, we, could, we could come deep and they'll understand it. They will. They'll understand it. And it's also for us to stay on track. This is what we're really talking about when I'm talking about staying on track. I want to, I want to talk to you about that is because the first thing that I want you to understand is that the people of God are evil people. Hmm? You said amen louder for every other thing, but once I said that, everybody's like, oh, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. The people of God are evil. And, and the problem with it is that we... As Christians, we like to slice up evil to see which part of evil or which is the lesser value of evil than the other. No, 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 no. Whether you tell a white lie or you kill someone, it's still the same thing in the eyes of God. I, I know it's hard to, to be able to understand that, but to humans, that's not the way it is. But to God, he looks at it all as the same exact thing. I hope somebody's with me today. Uh, because to God, anything opposite of God is evil. I want us to be able to get that thing, thing through. The hard part of this is for us to be sensitive towards who and what is evil. <laughs> Look, our government is evil. But there's still some good done. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, you know we have family members who are evil. Uh huh. It got louder now. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Especially after Thanksgiving. No, we have right. But but there's but there's good within the family. There, there's something that benefits within the family. But there's evil involved. I, I want to cut to the chase here by saying we all are evil. There's something about us that irritates the kingdom of God. And, and, and I need to use it that way because there's no reason for us to come around and try to water down who God is. I don't know. God is not the one to be watered down. So basically, what God says, he means it. And anything opposite of what God says is not about God. It's simple like that. But we, as humans, we, as creation beings from God... We like to do things our own way. Yeah, we do. I only heard one person say have mercy. Um, 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 and the reason why that person said have mercy, and I'll tell you why the person said that, because they recognize who they are, and I recognize who I am. Boy, I sure wish being a pastor could take me straight to the kingdom. Oh, man, wouldn't that be nice? It'd be, it'd be nice that I could, get, I could just show my credentials. I, I'm making fun here with Peter at the front gate. I'm just, I'm just thinking about how it would be if I could just show him my credentials. He'd say, oh, you have Ventus Pass to come right in. I wish that was so. If that should be the case, I'd go ahead and make credentials for everybody so that we could all walk in. It doesn't happen that way. A job does not make you a better Christian. Hold on now. A, a, a member of the church don't make you a better Christian. Uh, oh, it's getting heated now. Pastoring don't make you, elders don't make you a better Christian. What makes us better is how long and how we hang out with the master. Uh, it is just really that easy because the truth is that the longer you spend with him, you have to change. Uh, we, are, we are magnetized towards evil. The time that we spend with God, the kind of relationship that we have with God pulls us away from the magnetization of sin. Somebody with me here? So I want you to understand that the more we stop having devotion, 
the more we, 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 we fill our minds with things of, of no value, yeah. uh -huh. can, can, can I just tell you my weakness? I know, I know, I know we don't, I'm not going to put all my weaknesses out there because you all are not going to forgive me. So I'm not going to do that. One of my weaknesses is the news. I, I, I watch the news all the time. I sit down on CNN. Then I want to hear what crazy the other one is saying. And then I want to come back and find out what this one is saying and what that one is saying. By the time I'm, I'm finished, I'm depressed. Now, y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. I, I want you to know that this pastor struggles with anxiety and depression. Don't, don't ask me how deep my depression is. I ain't going to tell you all that. But I'm going to tell you that there, there is something there. And sometimes I watch certain things and it brings me back to that. Anytime you get on and you start listening to CNN, there's all bad news. They make money off of bad news. Could you imagine that the commercials would not want to run in between if we kept say, putting on the news things that were good? But all you need to do is put on bad stuff and it just attracts. So sometimes I sit around and I realize that this young 15-year-old walks into a, a, a school and, and, and shoot up the place and this, is that, and the other. Guess what? Where we are in this world, that's nothing new. Come on, saints. I thought we were going to talk here today. I, 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 we have been, our young people have been desensitized uh, that now when we hear something of this magnitude happens, it's nothing new, it's business as usual. Un until it happens to your family. Until it happens to a member of your church. Until it happens to your family, or until it happens to someone you know, or in your neighborhood, that's when it makes a difference. But for me, hearing about what have just happened, I said, oh boy, there's another thing. Let's see what's going to happen next week. Don't tell me that we don't live in an evil world, and an evil society, and an evil place now where evilness, if I can use that word, has even crept into the church. Where things that have happened here is now something normal that I can talk about you like a dog and that's normal. And I can get on the phone and, and talk about how bad church went today, it becomes normal. And the people that we don't like in, it's getting quiet, they don't like in the church, it, we, now it becomes normal to us. Evil has taken over and there's only one way for evil to be rid of in our lives in church is the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, I'm saying this because I struggle the same way. Oh, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that there's no evil in my life. Evil has a way of presenting itself. It'll show up even when you, listen, I don't know about you. I, I, have you do you have family members that, that are alcoholic or family members that's on crack or family members that have problems? I, I know you're the clean ones. I'm saying, do you have family members? That's like that family members that smoke, family members, you know, all of us have that. I'm not talking about your problem right now. I'm talking about your family members' problem, we, right? And, and when they heal from that thing or when they move away from that, it's not done. You know, I know some people are going to be mad at me when you talk about overcoming. Uh, that's what we're doing every day. We're overcoming. We don't over overcome. We're overcoming. Through, only through Jesus can you. And even when you are on the side of Jesus and have overcome something, you can't hang around that thing anymore. I've heard family member, a family member of mine who was on crack, who's no longer on crack, can still hear crack calling them. Oh, come on, y'all. And, and we could safely talk about crack from here from the pulpit. We can safely talk about alcoholism from here, from the pulpit. We can easily talk about other things from here, but all of us got something that's a part of our lives that calls us. The Bible starts off by saying in the children of Israel, which is naming who they are, still belonging to God, Oh, I, you heard me. Still belonging to God and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God. If it wasn't still his child or still his children, the Bible probably would have said, and those people. 
you know how we say things. And them people did evil in the sight. No, 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 no. He still, even in the word it says, and the children of Israel, which is his, did evil in the sight of God. That's the first part of it. The reason why I'm spending so much time on this part is because you won't understand number two, and you won't understand number three, and you won't understand number four until you could cover number one. The number one thing is that there's evil. There's a book that came out called The Purpose Driven Life. I don't know if you all remember it. It, was, it just spread all around the place. But a really good book. And I think the first or the second chapter, one of the first chapters in there says it's not about you. I, if that was the first chapter, it was very difficult for me to get to the second chapter. Yeah, I, see, now, yeah. are you understanding where I'm going with this? Because how can you get to the second chapter if you can't get past the first chapter? It, 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 it's all about you. Now, 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 let me just tell you, this is a personal thing that I'm going through right now. I'm learning to love me. No, no, I'm, I'm really serious about that. I, I'm learning to love me and who I am. Uh, I'm not talking about the evil side of it. I'm talking about the person, who I am. I, I, have, I have stood in the mirror and said, I love you to me, and it felt strange. We are so much, we learn to love each other, but we don't learn to love ourselves. So, so I'm, I'm going through something, Sister June, where I, I literally, sometimes I just, I just put on my phone and say, you know, I love you. Yeah, you. It feels strange. I'm, I'm learning to love who I am, right? But, but, but and, and, and I have to be careful that I don't love me to the point where I don't love you. Or I don't love God. Come on, that's the problem that happened in the kingdom in the first place. Uh, 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 Lucifer looked, looked that good, sing that well, play the organ that good. Actually, he didn't even play the organ. It came out of his mouth to the point where it was all about him. In order for us to be able to move in steps towards God, you have to know where you are. Many of us feel as though we are already on God's side only because we are comfortable in our sins. You know, where, you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm speaking out of experience. This is, this is not a, about you. This is about God and what God wants from us. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of God. And the next part of that verse says, and the Lord delivered them. Okay, hold on. Not the, good, not the delivery you're thinking about. Delivered them into the hands of the enemy. Number two, that's the number two we're going to, it's four, so you'll know when I'm landing this plane. One, the people of, people of Israel did evil in the sight of God, and because they did evil in the sight of God, because you do evil, because I do evil in the sight of God, God allows us, come, come on, come on, come on, God allowed us to be delivered into the hand of the enemies. One thing I love about this, Sister June, is that it just doesn't end there. It says seven years. No, no, I like that. I like that. You know why? Because God loves me so much that he's even looking after me in my foolishness. That he gives a time frame, at least, that he wants us to come out of it. Allows us to be delivered into the hands of the Midianites for seven years. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, 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 we're on number two. The first one is what, everybody? That we have done what? Evil in the sight of God. And the second one is that God allows us to be delivered into the hands of the enemy because of our behavior. Because of our behavior. So, so, so I just want you to understand this. The only reason why we have uh, master guides, pathfinders, leaders, is so that people can understand what leadership and behavioral types of leadership is about. Because even we as master guides are not perfect, but yet God allow us to be guides. Ain't that crazy? Justin wasn't perfect. I'm sure you could sit down and name a hundred things that your brother and your sister. Listen, listen, if y'all weren't here, like you sit in front of a therapist or a counselor, you, you, I know you, you're still grieving. It's only a year, right? You're still grieving. We, we're gonna, if you sit down, you talk and say, you know what? Let me tell you what he did to me. 
I, I'm talking to the family now, but it's not just the family, but if you know someone, they got good and bad. You know, you're not going to sit up here and talk about Justin was all good. Something, he had to be bad about something. He walked into my, my thing and, and, and he embarrassed me by out pre. <laughs> but I, was, I ain't happy about that. I, I, see his, I see his sister waving her hand in the back. <laughs> That's the first time I said, You're right, preacher. You go on now, you preach. No, you got good and you got bad along the way. Come on. It's a, that's how we all have lived throughout this. But God allow us to be delivered. Watch this, family. I'm sorry to put this. I'm not even sorry to say this. Even in death, God delivers us. One day you'll hear the story why God allowed it to happen. I can't answer that question for you, mama. I mean, um, um, uh, father and sister and family members and fa church family members. I can't answer that for you. But the one thing I do know, that he didn't leave him. Neither did he forsook him. Was always there. Evil caused that. Are, are, are you getting where I'm going? Evil has caused that. The pandemic, evil has caused that. Come on. And all we need to do is to make sure that the blood of Jesus is over our doorpost. Right? And even if it means that, even if, if, even if you can't take out the blood and put it over your doorpost, it should be on the doorpost of your hearts. The first one is that what did evil in the sight of God? What's the second one, everybody? God allowed him to be delivered. And when you are delivered in the hands of the enemy, certain things happen to you. Oh, I'm going to say what I got to say. Certain things happen. When you're delivered into the hand of the enemies, you start to talk like them. I'm not even going to get specific because you know what yours is. I know what mine is. And if I get specific, I don't know. I might be on YouTube tomorrow. So I don't want to get specific. What I want you to understand is that when you do evil in the sight of God and God allows you to be delivered in the hands of the enemies, you start to look like, the, like them. You start to walk like them. You start to talk like them. Come on. Come on now. Uh, you, you start to philosophize like them. Uh, the, the, the word no longer mean anything to you because, because you'd rather deal with the scientific and, and even though God is science. I said even though God is science. We, we, we could talk about that on another day. Uh, but I want you to understand uh, that we start to do everything that they're doing and God is still there watching over you. Oh, I've been in bad situations that I know I've gotten out of not because of the devil. You go ahead and give the devil credit. Uh, I've been at parties I shouldn't have been at. And things happened at that party and I made it out of that party. That, the, devil ain't, the devil ain't walked me out that party. Are y'all understanding? Even when you're delivered and on the other side, God does not, he, he does not sit around doodling while you're in doing whatever you're doing. He's still watching over you. The problem is that we don't understand, God, that he's looking at evil and still protecting us in our evil. I know we don't like to preach that thing. We want to say either or either. No, 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 no. No matter what you go through in life, no matter what's going on in your life, you have been, it's been permission for you to be on the evil side. Permission. I didn't say, I didn't say that God wanted you to do that. I'm saying he's still going to watch over you, still going to look over you, still going to... But, but there's one thing that God would not allow. He is not going to make robots for his kingdom. You've got to make a free choice. And when you're on the opposite side of God, things start to change. Let me tell you something. You know, sin, a song says sin has left the crimson stain. And one thing I learned about being on the other side is that no matter what happens, you're always going to walk with a limp. You come back. I tell my young people this all the time, and let me change this for young people really quick. You can, you can, you can come back, but you're going to walk with a limp. You can go out there and smoke weed and carry on, and I don't care the science people say is better than cigarettes. Yes, I said it. You could take this part out on YouTube and put it in there. Yes, weed is better than cigarettes. Scientifically, it is. It's still going to slow down your memory. It's still going to slow down some stuff. 
Still gonna make you say things you shouldn't say or you really wanted to say. <laughs> Still gonna make you have the munchies. I mean, no matter what you're doing. If you're laughing, you know what I'm talking about, but okay, I'm gonna keep moving, I'm gonna keep moving. It's gonna cause all those things to actually happen, but guess what, when you come back, you're coming back to God in his arms, but with the problems that you had when you was on the other side. Are you, are you getting where I'm going with that? Yeah, I know that God's arms are always open wide, but there's going to be some type of consequences that happen when you're on the other side. And that's what we need to teach our young people. Uh, you might live through it, but you won't be the same. And all of us who are older, we know that story. We've been through that story. We understand that story, uh, that things happen to you. Can, number one, what? We did what? Evil in the sight of God. Number two? All right, I'm still on this last part of number two. What ends up happening to us when we're on the other side is that we remember from whence we came. Listen, during this pandemic, you're going to hear Pastor Graham, that, that guy, say, oh, the church, you don't have to be saved. In church. You could be at home and worship God and be saved. And that's true. I said, that's true. You can't tell me otherwise. This building ain't going to save me. The pews ain't going to save me. Looks good. Organ playing, all that, that's not going to save me. The fellowship is what I miss. The iron that sharpens iron. The Sabbath school and argumentative, I didn't say arguments. The argumentative in Sabbath school is what sharpens us. Teaching our children in a group, little feet, be careful where you take me to. Anything for Jesus, only let me do. And when we learn these songs of coming up, that's what church is all about. The reason why I love church life is because it's a part of what's in our hearts. So when we're on the other side and the things of heaven grows dim, I said it the other way around and the things of heaven grows dim, there's still that small voice. And when you get that small voice in the midst of terror, and you answer that small voice in the midst of terror, it does something to God. Oh man, how many mothers are right here? Just how many mothers, how many mothers? All right. Mothers, I'm going to say this, fathers, we don't have a clue. God has given mothers another sense. That you could be, it could be 3 o'clock in the morning, and the spirit wake you up and say, something going on with my daughter or my son. Not physically. Your daughter or your son or your children could be thinking something. And God has given you the ability to say, hold on, let me pray for them right now. Something's going on. Men, we don't have that. I know, I know we think we're superior in everything, but we ain't superior in that. Mothers have this way of just knowing when it's their child. I'll give you an example. If, 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 if you walk with a, 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 in a parade, I don't know, I'm from New York City. If you in a Macy's parade or, 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 or a big surrounding, okay, I'll switch it up. If you go to Oshkosh, they're like thousands of children. If your child is amongst hundreds of children and you're walking and can't find them, I'm talking about moms now, and your mother, I mean, and your child shout out mommy in the midst of music, in the midst of drum corps playing, in the midst of noise and bedlam, whatever it is, when your child shouts out, mommy, you stop and say, hold on. Y'all not hearing me, y'all not hearing me. Not hear me. And listen, I can equate that, Sister Hopkins, to when, when Jesus was in the parade. Come on, you know where I'm going with this. And Jesus is walking in the parade and the lady reaches out and grabs on to the hem of his garment. And Jesus stops and says, who touched me? And everybody's looking at him like, are you crazy? Everybody is touching you. No, somebody touched me uh, that had enough faith to draw power from me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's, it's the same thing a mother has when that child screams out, mommy. A hundred children could scream out, mommy, and you hear yours. Yeah. 
So when I'm on the evil side, come on, y'all, come on. When I'm on the destruction side, oh, come on. When I'm on that, 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 the, the other side, and I find out sometimes God allow us to be on our backs so that we can see the stars. Hmm? Otherwise, we ain't looking up. Sometimes God allow us to be in bad health so we could depend on him more. I'm going to say the next one. I don't want to hear no hallelujahs after this. Sometimes God allow us to be broke. I told y'all not to say nothing so that we could understand who owns the real bank, not Wall Street, not China. We understand uh, my father owns cattle upon a thousand hills. And until we understand that, God keeps us down on the ground until it's time for us to understand where he's from. Can I get to the next part of the verse down, down further on? It says, it says, because of what the Midianites did to them, because of what the enemy did to them, because of where they were, Verse 7 says, and it came to pass, verse 7, when the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. I want to stop it there real quick. Why did they cry out? They cried out because of the Midianites. That's what the Bible says. If you're, if you're reading it, that's what the Bible says. Don't worry about what I'm talking about. Go by what the Bible says. The children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Let's go back to number one. Number one, what everybody? They did evil in the sight of God. What's the second one everybody? He allowed them to be delivered mm -hmm, into the hands of the enemies. What's the third one? They what? I can't hear you. They what? Now y'all Adventists, can I get here Pentecostals real quick? Uh, 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 they did what everybody? That's it, that's it. They cried out. We don't know how to cry out. We're too embarrassed to cry out. We're too embarrassed to pray loud. We're too embarrassed to be at that restaurant and pray before we eat. We're too embarrassed to sing the right songs. We're too embarrassed to all, for all of that because of where we are. But when we see that we're on flat on our backs and things are just not working out anymore, the children of Israel did what, everybody? Cry out to God. Could you imagine if a mother could feel the way a mother feels about a child? Come on now. The way Jesus felt about that woman that held on to the hem of his garment. When you cry out, it does something to the heart of Jesus. Then Jesus does what after that? The fourth one says, and I want you to see it real quick. It says in verse 8, the Lord sent a prophet. Come on. The Lord sent a prophet to deliver the children. Now, I want you to see this because really there's a part two to this. Those four stages, we already know them. That's how Gideon jumps on the scene. Uh, come on, y'all. I, I, I know, I know. I, you wanted me to tell the story of Gideon. I can't tell the story of Gideon because he sent a prophet to already win the war. Come on, I need you to, I need you to understand this before I sit down. This is the part that makes sense. The children of Israel cries out. God allows them to be, uh, to, to, to be delivered into the hands of the enemies. Then when they see where they are, the third step is for them to do what? They cry out, and then God sends a prophet. You see the four steps? You see the four steps, everybody? And, and here's what I want you to understand, uh, is that you are in the same predicament as the children of Israel because I am a child of God. Number two, I've done evil in the sight of God. Then when I get on that opposite side where, where I'm delivered to them, the third thing is that I know when to scream. Y'all not hearing me? I know when to shout. I know when my prayers are real, and I know when my prayers are fake. I, I, think, I, I, I think I'm talking to somebody here. When my prayers are real, it does something to the throne of grace and mercy that makes him say, hold on a second, Gabriel. <laughs> I hear Pat Graham calling me. No, 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 no. I know we are Adventist church and we're a big Adventist family. I take this thing personally because when he died on the cross, it was a personal thing. This ain't no group rate. Just because June prayed today, Sister June prayed today, we all ain't going to the kingdom because she prayed. No, no, no. I want you to understand this thing uh, that we are in the same predicament and every day we should be crying out because God always makes a way out for us. We don't necessarily take it. But he makes a way out for us every single time. Now remember now, Gideon jumps up on the scene right after that. God chose a 17, 18 year old boy named Gideon to walk in and form an army of 30 something thousand. And God said, I don't need them. Come on, you know the story. 
and comes back around and breaks it down half of that, comes down with 300 men. That's not the point of my story. The point of my story is that those 300 men were already chosen from the time they cried out. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, yeah, we went through the storyline, but you missed the point that when God speaks up on our behalf, when God walks into our life on our behalf, the war is already finished and won. How do I know this? The book of Judges, and I want you all to check this out on your own as I'm coming down to a close. What I want you to understand is that the reason why this story comes up is because in the book of Judges, it happens over and over and over and over and right because at the end Gideon turns around he's mad he goes right back to the same old mess again from Judges 1 2 3 this is 6 if you go all the way to Judges 10 the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God you're gonna see it again and when they did evil in the sight of God he delivered them to the Philistines y'all still not hearing me and when he delivered them to the Philistines and then they cried out and then God sends Samson You see, you see what's going on? It's going on over and over again. It's something that repeats itself because God is always waiting for us to cry out for the delivery. What did Samson do? Lived his whole life as he, 20 years as a judge and decided she pleases me well. Oh, he wasn't an alcoholic. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, saints. He wasn't an alcoholic. He wasn't a crackhead. Oh, y'all, you know where I'm going with this. He had his own problem that he couldn't really beat. And then what ends up happening? That God had to take his eyes for him to find strength. Lord, I need my eyes. So you got to make sure whatever you... Listen, God will take your eyes so that you can see. Let me say that one more time if you didn't hear me. If you cry out, he'll do whatever he needs to do in order for you to make it to the kingdom. So if this... This is not... I'm glad you're a Christian, Dad, so you can understand this piece. It may not be clear, but you can understand this piece. God allowed what happened to happen in order to save. When you see Justin again, you're going to turn around and be, man, we missed you. You should have, they moved from Oscars to, to Gillette. You should have been, the, you, it's like, it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was in God's safety deposit box this whole time. I know y'all had a good time. I know y'all had a good time, but God took me now so that, I don't, so that uh, he, would, he wouldn't have to take me when I was on the opposite side. Are, are, are you understanding what's going on here? God's purpose for sending his son is to save us. Save us, not when we're in the church. Oh, y'all missed that. Because many of us are lost in the church. Y'all right, say whatever you want to say. You can stay here and play whatever game. You can master guide up all you want to master guide up. You can praise team all you want to praise team. You can do that fake. We don't know what's going on. But God saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. So we all have done evil in the sight of God. And then delivered into the hands of the enemy. And then the people of God, we need to learn how to cry out. It tickles God when we cry out. We don't serve a God that look mean. Well, no, I'm sorry about all these pictures they put out there of an evil God throwing down lightning every time we do something wrong. That ain't, that's the God y'all serve. That ain't the God I serve. No, no, I'm serious. You know how we teach kids that, oh, you, you know, God is going to be angry and take your life. When you step in the club, he's going to take your life. Really? Then you keep serving him. I would rather serve Satan. Oh, yeah who's going to give me what I want, I die in 70 or whatever years he give me, or whatever I sign the contract like most of these music artists do, <laughs> than to serve a mean, nasty God. For me to live with him through the endless ages of a mean, nasty eternity? No, then I'll serve Satan. I know those are big words. But it's just the opposite. Satan wants us to think that God is that way. Oh, God's not that way. Oh, no, 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 no. My God is not that way. Uh, I'm sorry. And listen, and change your mindset if you ever believe that God was that way. No. God sent his only begotten son. I said his only. 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life don't stop there god sent his son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved if you don't ever read anything else in the word of god understand that when you cry out salvation goes into effect immediately we don't work with a God or, or serve a God that's time framed out. Nah, nah. Matter of fact, I'm going to say this, I'm going to sit down. You see, Justin? From his last breath, he's already at the point. Listen, I'm not saying he's living with God. It's like a sleep. Y'all ever sleep good, good? No, no, no. Y'all don't sleep good. Y'all got too much bills and all that to worry about. Have you ever slept good, good? Y'all sitting at me saying, okay, he has a master's degree and he's talking about good, good. You can't find any other word? No, I can't find any other word. I'm asking you a question. You ever put your head down and when you wake up, it's morning? Come on, man. You understand where I'm going with that? You ever put your head down? You tired. You put your head down. I don't care what the dog is saying. I don't care what your wife, is, I mean, the family is saying. I don't care what's happening. You wake up, you're like, well, what just happened between 1030 and five or six o'clock at the time, I just well, I didn't hear anything. That's what he's going through right now. He's going through a rest period. He's going through a sleep period. When he wakes up, he wakes up with a new name. Come on, new clothes. Come on, yeah, yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. He wakes up with something new. Why? Because while he was there, whatever trauma he was going to, he knew who to cry out to. You can't tell me when something is going on, you don't know who to turn to. When Samson was, was, was wheeling that and he was in the, he was in the gymnasium, y'all not hearing me, he was in the gymnasium while they were making fun of him and he was and making sport of him, he was lifting weights in front of them, y'all not hearing me, his hair started to grow while he was there and they couldn't even see that while his hair was growing, the spirit of God was on him. Come on y'all, you know what, we don't know what's going on in somebody's life, we think they're in some other kind of prison when they're having a relationship with God and God is growing them into something else, he says, put me between the two pillars. <laughs> Why? Put me between the two pillars. Why? Because the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God. I'm going to sit down on this one. And number two, God allowed the Philistines or God allowed the children of, uh, of Israel, God allowed whatever the case is, allowed us to be in the land of, of, of the, uh, that uh, uh, delivered us into the land of the enemies. And number three, they cried out. Samson cried out to God. God says, put him between the two pillars over there so we could go ahead and finish what we done started. Y'all hearing me? I want you to understand this, that this pandemic is nothing new. It happened in 19-something. God want to know if his people can make it through this thing. Because there are bigger things coming. Come on, y'all. This is not the mark of the beast. The vaccine is not the mark of the beast. So I, I talk to me after church or get mad at me later on. This is not the mark of the beast. But it's a setup to what the end of the world is going to look like. I didn't say this is the mark of the beast, but it's a setup to what, the, what, what it's going to look like. And I need you to be on the right side. Would you promise me that you'll pray for me, that I be on the right side? Come on, I got my ups and downs. I got my ups and downs. Uh, what about you? I'm going to pray for you that you be on that right side. Yes, we, we gave Justin's father and, and family a flag. That's just for you to look at. But when he breaks the east, come on y'all, when he breaks the east, there's a land where there's no night there. Come on y'all. Can you imagine what it would be like to be there? I want you to make it there. I'm sorry, I don't have dreams of being lost. I have dreams of being saved. Can I just tell you one dream and I'm out? I had a dream that I was in heaven. I was standing next to my angel. Then there was a decree. Listen to this. I could see down the mile of the table. It was long. The angel, there was a declare from the front that says, we are now about to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. I turned to my angel, I said, I don't know this song. 
My angel said, well, I can't sing it. Y'all not hearing me. Angel said, I can't sing it. But because of what you have gone through, the words are going to come to you naturally. I don't know what the words are, but I'm going there to find out what it's going to be all about. So God, I ask you to continue to be with us. Even in our struggles, God, even in our pain, I ask you, Lord, to give us the spirit of crying out so that we could be saved in your kingdom, living with you throughout the endless ages of eternity. In Jesus' name I pray and for his name's sake. Could somebody cry out by saying hallelujah? Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. God bless you.